how to go full time as a real estate investor. So I look at it as people generally fall into two buckets. Uh, bucket number one, you know, you're not looking to go full time real estate because you like your job, you make decent money and you have some sort of flexibility there. And bucket number two is if you don't like your job and love real estate, know that's where your passion is and want to get into it full time and make it a job. That's the cool thing about real estate. It could be a profession, but it could also be just treated as an investment as well. So I loved it so much that I wanted to make it a job and sa same with you, but you don't have to do that. So let's start with bucket number one. You like your job, you make good money, you have some sort of flexibility with your with your work schedule. Uh, whether you can take long lunch breaks like I, I've done, or maybe you work from home and can jet out to a project, or or maybe you only work three days a week as a, as a nurse or a firefighter or something like that. So any combination of those, uh, we're gonna fall into this bucket. So if that is you, you like your job, you don't think real estate's your full-time gig, I would focus on building wealth and or uh, an earlier retirement than you initially had planned with rental properties. So rental properties could be single family, you know, it could be apartments, storage, vacation rentals, commercial retail, whatever type of asset that you can hold on to and continue or, and start to build that equity is, is where you should start if you don't need that active income that real estate can also provide. What do you think about that, Matt? I think it's a great way to get in, especially someone who maybe risk uh, averse you know it's it, you have support from your active income um, yep if, if you're earning a significant amount of money it's a great way to to channel some of that that income into an investment yeah uh, protect yourself from for, for, for some taxes as well um, but ultimately that's it's it's a great way it's a yeah. great way yeah it's a great point uh, you said two things there that I really liked um, uh, I, you're much more bankable with a w-2 job absolutely P period so uh, to do the birth strategies or to hold long-term debt on any sort of rentals, having that W-2 job is going to be a lot easier to get a loan on a rental property. I feel like now with how, how much banks have tightened up, and I, I don't oh, know, yeah. not even almost a necessity, but yeah. there's still ways to, to still get loans, but uh, very important piece yeah. of, of building a portfolio. A, a banker would rather see an $80,000 W-2 than a $250,000 wholesaler fix and flipper. Absolutely. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> it is. And, and doing it on the side, then being an expert at it and being full-time and doing it every day. Right, right. Yeah. And, and as a real estate investor, your, your tax returns are not gonna be pretty usually. Mm -mm. They're no. interesting, they're all over the place. They're messy, yeah. They are messy. How but, who, yeah. Good, but I, I just think when, you're, when you have your active income coming in, you have a little bit more flexibility and, and and acquiring rentals and and also you know there's a lot of expenses and fixes that come up yep. uh, so just that reassurance knowing you have that w-2 that active income coming in to offset some of those costs yeah and and kind of mitigate some of those fears that some folks have getting started no i think i, I love it i love it um and getting into the other point you talked about um there there are also opportunities within real estate that don't involve owning rentals and having that being part of your retirement uh but otherwise uh, increase your active income. So say you make $90,000 now, you know, if you made $150,000 that year because you supplemented with two or three flips or a few wholesales, like what could that do to your life? Absolutely, you know what yeah. I mean? That extra, you know, 10 to 70 grand that you can make, you know, you could dump that in to, to another investment vehicle and therefore increase your or shorten your retirement date um, or maybe you, you have a good retirement date out there and you can supercharge your lifestyle. Like you know, a $10,000 wholesale, take your whole family to yeah, a great to, vacation. To Turks and Cake, right? Yeah. You just got back from there. Just got back. You can go to Turks and Cakeos twice for our, yeah, with 10K. So. Well, with the whole family? For the whole family, I'd probably need 10,000. Yeah. yeah, you're right. I mean, it's, it's, there's so many, uh, just the flexibility that real estate investing provides um, yeah. while having that W-2 uh, as that sort of that, that safety net. Um, so, so definitely increasing your active income. Yep. Uh, but more importantly, I think if someone has a W two or, or a, a good active income, I, I still recommend the rental portfolio route for the long term wealth. Yeah. Uh, you probably, if you have your active income in your W two, you're you're contributing to a four hundred one k or a Roth yeah. as well through your company. Uh, this is just really supercharging 
that long-term investment yeah. and so you'll you'll be able to have both cash flow from your rentals and be able to draw off your 401k uh when you're retired so you're you're double double dipping on for your, sure on your investing or you can do a fix and flip and take that money and put it in a down payment on a rental mm-hmm. like wh- whatever it takes to acquire these rental properties and start building that equity it's uh, whatever it takes because it is that powerful and you know the more you're in real estate and the more rental properties you have you can shield some of your other income with uh, the tax benefits that real estate provides yeah, absolutely what's the isn't there a metric uh Every house is about three thousand dollars less in taxable income. It's it's more than that. Um, it's about seven thousand dollars. Seven thousand, yeah. yeah. So uh, for a two hundred thousand dollar house, yeah, give or so take. Buying twenty, you got twenty rentals. There's one hundred forty k. Yeah, you're trumping it, paying yeah. no taxes. <laughs> yeah, it's just a great, it's just a great way. Yeah, super cool. All right, so that's bucket number one. If you like your job, you know, focus on building wealth. Um, that equity, it's the cash flow is not going to be substantial enough probably initially to increase your lifestyle that's not what that cash flow is for i would just continue keeping that to the side rainy day fund dumping it back into the properties to to fix your properties up and then there'll be a point in time where you can live off it and have no or much limited much less debt and um, have that be a part of your retirement strategy the next bucket this is if you don't like your job which uh, I feel like is uh, so a substantial amount of people that of I people. talk to. Yeah. yeah. What unfortunately, is a lot of people. And you have a passion for real estate and real estate investing. So two options here under, under this bucket. Option number one, get a full-time job in real estate to learn the industry. Get another W-2 job, but out of the industry, out of booze, out of uh, med- medic- medical, right. uh, out of... Uh, logistics and transfer some of those skills to a w-2 job within the real estate industry yeah absolutely i i, I love this approach um before diving yeah uh head first in um because ultimately it connects you with the network with a sphere of people that are doing it probably yeah. already um also provides you some some stable income uh, and it's going to allow you to gain that knowledge too yeah uh, while you're mm. starting off your real estate yeah. investing journey similar to what you did very similar. Similar to what I did as well. Um, and similar to our, our good friend and mentor, Mr. Brian Schroeder, same thing. He uh, loved real estate. He was an engineer like I was an engineer. And he went to be an appraiser. Um, so he, he could analyze properties very quickly. That's a skill that you learn in that role. Uh, I went to be a project manager. But other professions and, and roles that you can take on, a uh, traditional real estate agent, you can learn a lot quickly there, especially if you're on the investment side of things. Uh, property manager, you know, if you're operation focused, customer service focused, um, you can learn a lot working for a quality property management company and better manage your rentals when you start to build that portfolio. Or on the sales side of things, you can go be a acquisition manager for uh, one of your local uh, wholesaling companies. And that's a fun role. We got a few great of those role. guys. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's a great way to, you really get a taste of a uh, of all the above if you're an acquisition manager yeah. you learn how to analyze the deal you understand the sales side of the uh of the acquisition and wholesaling process a lot of our folks have uh, real estate licenses and um to me it, it really that's that is that we call supercharge that's yeah. a supercharge way to dive into real estate investing yeah. is learning how to do a deal it, and it's the right company too Absolutely. obviously it's that environment that we talked about so um, you don't want to take a job just with any company because it's the right role you want to make sure you're surrounded by those like-minded people that can elevate your investing career while your w-2 career continues to to elevate as well so uh, I, I love that option um, uh, specifically i see it from from our team and I know the power of what our team can provide if you come and work for our company. Um, I'm not sure it's like that everywhere. It's probably not, but uh, just make sure you get on the right team. Yeah, a lot, a lot, of, a lot of occupations, a lot of jobs you can get within the industry. Yeah. So I encourage you to do your research, see what best fits your skill set too. It's important to make sure you understand what you're good at and what fits uh, your style and your life, and then go find something that 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 meets your needs. All right, so we're talking about how to go full-time as a real estate investor. Um, Talked about not going full-time and to focus on rentals. We talked about uh, getting a W-2 job within the real estate industry. But this next option, Matt, is, I don't know, it's kind of my favorite, even though I didn't take this exact route. But I love people and respect people that that do make the jump, all right? Um, So this 
person uh, is is trying to figure out a way to replace their current income uh, with real estate investing. So what is the best way to do that? Um, first, I'm going to start with the foundation. That's that's just who I am. Um, you know, know where you're heading, figure it out, and put a game plan in place to get there. And, and it, it sounds simple, but a lot of people don't have this. It's build a budget, period. Um, do people not build budgets? People don't build budgets. Wow. Yeah, I was a budget nerd when I was making $44,000 a year my first job. <laughs> do you I, have a budget now? I do have a budget. I don't track everything like okay. I used to, but everything going out, I used to track it to the T, categorize it, what what you know categories this in, and uh, it really helped me understand what I needed to live and what I had left over, and that's the point of this. Yeah, we it, call that burn rate in our house. What's it, our burn rate? Every yeah, month? like a startup. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, what is your burn rate? No, I'm just joking. Um, so uh, what are your monthly expenses? And uh, how much you need to survive every month? And from there... Uh, Do you need Starbucks every day to survive? Well, so I, we have two different budgets in our house. It's the emergency budget, which is no Starbucks. Right. And then it's like, okay, here's a, here's a comfortable living budget. Sure. And that comfortable living budget is probably like your you know, financial freedom number, give or take. Um, but that emergency budget is if you were looking to make the shift quick is, is what you can live off of. That's the one I would go off of for yeah, sure. I agree. Um, and, and be prepared mentally that your lifestyle may change a little bit if you need yeah. to c compress down to your, your survival budget. Yeah, for sure. So, um, all right, we'll, we'll get into more budget and building reserves here in a minute, but all right, in order to replace your, your active income. So couple different option here. Uh, wholesaling you know we do a lot of wholesaling we wholesale a couple hundred houses a year you would say mm -hmm. and uh if you are you know a sales and marketing personality i think wholesaling is a great option for you uh if you're a wholesaler you love finding the deal that's marketing whether you're out there networking with people trying to buy houses from them, or you're actually paying for advertisement in, in the form of direct mail or um facebook ads or something like that and then uh, on the sales side of that, uh, negotiating with sellers, because you'll have to go in a house, figure out what you can pay for the house to make money and to wholesale it to somebody, and then get the seller to uh, be comfortable with that price and, and sign a contract mm -hmm. with you. Yeah, I mean, there's not everybody can wholesale. We, yeah. you know, it, it has to be a, the right personality and you have to be confident yeah. in your ability. Uh, you have to be likable. People buy from people, right? That's, yeah. that's, 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 marketing 101 uh, but wholesaling to me it's 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 a i don't want to call it risk fee free but it's definitely the least barrier and to, of entry to yep. get into building some active income uh within within real estate but it does require someone that's going to put a lot of effort because yeah. uh, you're going to get 100 leads 100 of those 10 are going to be worth anything and then of those 10 luckily uh hopefully you're going to close one of those 10 so 100 is going to get you a buy. 100 gross leads will get you a buy uh are you willing to put that effort to find that one deal yeah that that's what it comes down to for sure and if, if you like that are you willing to put in is that your your passion and skill set it's is, also the, probably the quickest way too to start act active i mean you can you can turn a 10k wholesale in a, in a few in 30 weeks. days yeah yeah, yeah. So. that's a great point that's a great point um all right fix and flips uh this is more for the the operationally focused personality uh, maybe have some sort of uh, construction background or, or finance background as well i think would help with this um, not as quick as what you can see on the wholesale side of things um, you gotta you gotta find the deal um, you gotta rehab it and then sell it so probably more of a six month time frame give or take absolutely yeah and then you got to be be prepared too to have some from financing lined up to, yeah. to acquire that property as well so if you don't have that w-2 or you're not prepared with maybe some private money or 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 any type of uh, loan from someone be prepared that that you're going to have to acquire that so your leverage is going to be a little bit higher definitely more uh probably rewarding on the back end mm -hmm. uh and it is a lot of fun fixing and flipping but uh absolutely need to be operationally dialed in yes. super organized because yes. uh, as we know firsthand very much uh, a rehab can go wrong quick from a timeline and a budget perspective oh yes it can yes it can <laughs> you know you know firsthand on that matt absolutely so um with the fix and flips uh unlike the wholesaling where you spend the majority of your time finding that deal and negotiating um you're gonna when, when you're fixing flipping 
you know, maybe you'll find a direct to seller deal, but majority of your time, you're going to be buying from wholesalers or real estate agents or find something on the M MLS. So that'll be part of your time is finding that right deal. But the majority of your time will be focused on lining up the financing, managing that project in order to squeeze every dollar out of that deal. Yeah, you're still going to need some sort of relationship building ability. Yeah. But I, I feel folks that uh, want to just get into fix and flips, uh, establish those relationships with those local wholesalers yeah. and agents, uh, because that's if that's not your wheelhouse to go out and find the deal, let, let those folks find the deal for you. You establish that rapport uh, with them and, and, and acquire that property that way and then go do your thing on the mm -hmm. operational side and pick out your light fixtures and granite countertops yeah. and white sugar cabinets. I also think the fix and flip side of things, uh, you have to have some ability to lead and manage a team. Whereas wholesaling, you could probably do that by yourself. Yeah, with, solopreneur. With, yeah, solopreneur type, limited relationships. Um, with fix and flipping, you know, you gotta build relationships with people that are bringing you those deals. You have to build relationships with your contractor, with your, with your financing. Um, so you're really leading a, a team of some sort and managing that project from every aspect of it to see it all come together. Yeah, you have to have operations, finance, accounting. Yeah. You have to do it all. You have to you're, do you're, it all. You're essentially your own business owner for each flip. Yep, absolutely. So be ready for that. So all, we were talking about, you know, wholesaling and fixing and flipping as a way to go full time. Um, when, when you're first starting and looking to go full time, all of this probably needs to be done on the side unless you have a substantial amount of reserves already. So this is, you know, lunch hours before work, after work, weekends type of work. And it, it, it is a lot of work, but uh, it doesn't, if it truly is your passion, like this bucket is talking about, then it doesn't feel like the work that it, that it really is. So you need, you need to prove that model while you still have your full-time job. And, and do as many as it takes. Um, uh, just, just just go ahead. On that note, proving your model, not only proving the model financially or operationally, but proving the model for yourself. Yes. Right? That confidence going from zero to one is so important. Yeah. Um, and being able to do that kind of on the side as a side hustle uh, is, 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 to me, important because uh, if it maybe doesn't work out and, you know, it, it might not be, best for you then you can resort back to what you used to be doing but but proving your proving for yourself gaining that confidence confidence is such a huge part of real estate investing so i love i love proving it on as a side hustle prove yep. the model love it and then uh, going back to the the financing of it and in your budget so building up a reserve account or emergency account whatever you call it so you have your month monthly expenses right now you know what that number is uh let's say it's um five grand a month right um That'd be great if I could live off five grand a month. <laughs> Not possible anymore. Um, damn kids, right? Uh, but um, whatever that number is for you, I would recommend building up about a six-month reserve of some sort and prove the model before you jump in full time. Right. So five grand a month. You need thirty grand. You need in the thirty bank. grand. And set that aside. That is not your Joke. checking account. Don't touch it to buy a vanity. No. Or a refrigerator. Yeah. Keep that for a rainy day. But if there is an emergency use it that's what Absolutely, it's there for yeah. that's what it's there for um so build that emergency fund up prove the model and then you can go ahead and make the leap after that right matt agreed yeah, yeah. that's what i did yeah that's what a lot of folks we work with do too yeah yeah and then you can you know proving the model it helps you get efficient as well so we talked about one fix and flip could take up to six months depending on how quick you are mm -hmm. but then you can start getting efficient with those and trim that down to five months four months three months is even possible or two at a time and and then at that point you can start doing multiple projects at once and stacking them in phases so so you have your 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 budget that you need to live off of your monthly expenses and then say it's five grand a month um that's what 60 grand a year mm -hmm. how many flips does it take you to get to 60 grand a year you think i'd say conservatively two to three yeah yeah Two, two to, to three, three flips, you could replace your income. Right. And we've seen people do 60 grand profit flips on one on deal. one, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's very, there's, it's the, the, the lure of the, the luc lucrativeness of this industry is definitely there. Yeah. Um, but making sure that all the stuff that happens before that people don't talk a lot about. Yeah. That you're really dialed in. Because yeah. yes, you can make 60, 70, 80 grand on a flip. Yeah. Uh, but you can also lose on a flip. Yeah. So making sure that your model's proven. Um, but it's very, very doable. 
two or three flips a year for yeah. anyone, even as a side hustle sometimes, yep. uh, to replace that, that 60K a year, that the example yeah. that we're using. We, d- we did 12 one year as a side hustle. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Both you and Sam did, yeah. Yeah, not not like super profitable on <laughs> any of them. I think, I think we netted like 10 grand a house. Okay, it's 120 grand. 120 grand. That's good so living. It yeah. is a good living. But th- this was at a point where I didn't think this was my path to full time. Okay. Because I, I thought that I was going to get full time by rentals. That was it. So I was at We were adding so many rentals, and then doing fix and flips to save up a down payment for an apartment building. Mm-hmm. That was our plan. It worked out pretty good now, looking <laughs> back. But <laughs> right, but uh, I'm sure you had a lot of sleepless nights. I did. I still do every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I think you know, I could I could have got there faster. It took me over three years to go full time which is okay right right? but i think if you get this dialed in um and and do the way that we set it you can get to it within a year i think i really do yeah that's why i think it's important to to understand and assess your current situation yeah right are you a uh, the sole income provider for a family of five yeah should you leave your w2 tomorrow because you want to go do fix and flips no 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 um but if you're starting out right out of college or younger you, you you can live off uh less expenses yep uh, you have a lot more flexibility to go ahead and take that leap uh, and then and then yes you can you can make significant income in this industry and you can more importantly get get income from multiple multiple uh, sources yep so you build that reserve fund let's say 30 grand let's use that example of five grand a month uh, that's your first flip I think boom reserve you know what I mean you don't mm-hmm. have to funnel over a hundred bucks a month to build up a thirty thousand dollar reserve I say use it reserve funds built it up off your first investment property so that takes you six months do you go full-time at that point matt i think i think you could i think you could i would probably do one more i would i'd get, I'd get a few under your belt yeah. both from a, like the operation side but yeah. also financially as well for sure so then you do one more maybe it takes you only five months and um you're you're ready to go at that point you got another 30 grand on top of your 30 grand uh just as operation uh, just as in your checking account a little more flexibility and then go get that next one under contract and then uh you start building rentals then or what yeah so that's a great question like when you know when fix and flipping or wholesaling is your full-time gig it's hard to pass up a thirty thousand dollar check for 200 bucks a month cash flow 100 bucks a month cash flow So it's not super sexy, but it's so important long term. So the quicker you're able to replace that active income that you used to have with fix and flips, and uh, be okay for several months in the future going forward because you you've built up some cash, I would start looking at picking off a rental. Maybe maybe every other one, maybe mm-hmm. one out of three deals you do something like that. But but just start. Yeah, I'm a big fan of doing both. Uh, we're thir- are on our third or fourth year of investing, and to me, uh, two or three flips a year allows us the uh, financials uh, to bo- go ahead and acquire three to four rentals a year. So yeah. we're, we're we're probably one or two rental projects at a time yeah. while doing a flip, knowing if you know we need to leave some money in a deal or yeah. uh, something comes up on one of our previous rentals mm-hmm. that we have that that finance uh, or the financials from our flips that yeah. income from our flips to support us so oh i love that i like both at the same time yeah so we, looking back if i were to do this again i i would not have gone the wholesale route myself um, i love wholesaling but it's just not my exact skill set I would say I would I would have gone fix and flips. Okay, what well, well, go over the the skill sets again for a wholesaler? Wanna, yeah, wholesalers, sure you know. sales and marketing personality loves. You know, I do like finding the deal, um, analyzing the deal, analyzing. You the love deal. that. I love that, um, and I like. But and and I like meeting with sellers, and, and we bought a lot of houses that way. Um, but it wasn't through paid advertising, just through our network and real estate agents. And uh, but I, I I like building relationships with wholesalers and just letting them go hunt. And I'll take it down, line up the financing. I love that side of it, and then and then manage the project and and squeeze out more than the wholesaler is making probably. Uh, but it just took a little more risk and a little more time to do yeah. it. And you had you were, you did it with a partner, right? You and Sam. So yep. someone out there listening is thinking about going into 
wholesaling or fix and flips with a partner any any tips for them mm, that's a great point i would just uh make sure you have your your roles clearly defined uh sam is a sales and marketing type i'm probably more the operations um, but how we had it split up at the beginning was not good what we did is sam would run the flips uh, and I would run the rental projects. That's how we tried to start. And we, we knew pretty quick that that wasn't going to work <laughs> out. So with our personalities, we kind of shifted to Sam sales and marketing, find the deals, um, you know, private lender relationships a little bit. We both were. And then uh, I'll take it down, do our thing and try to maximize the profit that way. Yeah. yeah. I think that's important to understand your strengths, understand your, your partner's weaknesses. But clearly defining roles is, is so important. My wife and I, we, we make sure we, we uh, our first couple projects, we, we definitely crossed, uh, our paths too much. Yeah. And, uh, we lean on what her strengths are, which is the operations and the rehab side. And then I handle a lot of the acquisitions and, and finances. Yeah. Love that. I, I think you can go full time with rentals too. Um, but it's very hard to do it off of investment cash flow, I would say. One of the ways that you can go full-time with rentals, it's going to take some more time, um, but if you manage those properties yourself, mm -hmm. you can pay yourself a, a property management fee. Absolutely. Or so, uh, some house hacking, too, if you want to live in it and run out the other side. Yeah. Uh, definitely yeah. another way to help offset some of your, your, your mortgage. Man, I love house hacking. Yeah. I, I, I don't think it, it fit uh, my, where I was at my point in life, you know, getting married, starting a family. But um, if, if your spouse is on board and or kids, or maybe you, you, you don't have a significant other at the time, or maybe just a girlfriend or a boyfriend, man, house hacking is so powerful. Yeah. Good financing. Um, it kind of gets your, gets, your, gets your toe in the door a little bit while not jumping full time or not jumping headfirst into a burr strategy deal mm -hmm. I, I love that option yeah you know you can buy a duplex four family live in one unit run out the other three it's a lot of people have a lot of success doing that you got to be prepared to have some roommates or yeah. floor mates but <laughs> floor not mate. for me for sure yep thanks for watching we appreciate it make sure to hit that like button comment with something you learned and make sure to subscribe to this channel we give away more free advice on how to create wealth based on things we actually do every single day than any other channel on youtube make sure to share this with a friend because our mission is to inspire you to think differently about freedom